Let's talk about a different cell, cell number two. What are we supposed to think when we are given these conditions and a resting membrane potential of plus 61 millivolt in cell number two? By now, it must be a bit easier for us to answer this question. We are now going to compare the resting membrane potential with the NAST potentials of the two main ions here and try to understand what type of channel is present on the membrane of this cell when the cell is at rest. So these channels are producing the resting membrane potential. If the, we always have high potassium inside, high sodium outside, chemical of force of potassium and sodium in different directions, but whichever ion has a channel on a membrane, then this ion is going to try to bring the membrane potential towards its nearest potential. So, in cell 2, we can say that the cell membrane has only sodium channels, which are either called leak or resting channels. Does a cell like this exist? Cell number one can exist in the body, which means a cell with minus 80 millivolts is present in our body. But a cell with a resting membrane potential plus 61 millivolt is not present in the body. We have told previously that all cells in our body have a resting membrane potential with a negativity on the inner side of the membrane. So, with plus 61 millivolt, with a positivity on the inner side of the membrane, we don't have any cell with a resting membrane potential like this. Cell 1 exists in the body, but cell 2 does not. So, let us move on to another cell. As we go further, it's going to get a bit more complicated. Let's consider cell number three. These conditions are still present and this is our cell number three. What are we going to think if we measure the resting membrane potential to be something like minus 70 millivolts. As we can see here, the membrane potential is not equal to the nice potential of potassium, it's not equal to the nice potential of sodium. So this cell is not a cell with only potassium channels or only sodium channels. What should we think? This cell has both potassium channels and sodium channels, leak channels for both of the ions. But is that all that we should be considering? Can we talk about the relative amounts of potassium and sodium channels? At this point, I would like to make an analogy for pulling ropes. Um, let's say there's a group of people pulling ropes, pulling on a rope at a picnic. So, potassium, a group, one group is the potassium side, and they, the, the people belonging to this group will try to move the nearest potential to minus 80, and the people on the other group 
will try to move the nurse potential towards the side of sodium, which is plus 61. Who is going to win? If you don't have any sodium channels, potassium certainly wins. If you don't have any potassium channels, sodium certainly wins. But in a condition with minus 70 milliwatt, what are we going to think of? In a condition like this, we are going to imagine that on this side of the rope, there are more people compared to the number of people on the other side of the rope. The number of people or the number of hands placed on the rope can be considered as the number of ion channels that are present on the membrane to produce the resting membrane potential. So the more potassium channels you have, the membrane potential will move towards the nearest potential of potassium. So basically, this cell has both potassium and sodium channels, but we can say that the number of potassium channels is bigger than the number of sodium channels in this cell. So, if we summarize the condition, when we find a minus 70 millivolt resting membrane potential and we compare it to the nearest potentials of our two main ions, in a cell like this, we decide that there are both type of leak channels specific for potassium and sodium on the membrane. And because minus 70 millivolt is closer to the nearest potential of potassium, we are able to tell that the number of potassium channels on the membrane of this cell is bigger than the number of sodium channels. Let us talk about one last cell, cell number four, to finish our examples about resting membrane potential. Here is cell number four. And we measure the membrane potential, the resting membrane potential of it to be minus 60 milliwatt. Looking at the resting membrane potential and comparing it with the values of the nearest potentials for our two main ions, sodium and potassium, what are we able to say in this cell? We are able to say that there are both potassium and sodium channels. We are also able to say that the number of potassium channels is more than the number of sodium channels. But until now, we have not said anything different than cell number three which had a resting membrane potential of minus 70. Let us try to concentrate on the difference between the cell number 3 and 4. Yeah. Then we can talk about something else. We can talk about the ratio of sodium and potassium channels. In which cell do you think potassium to sodium ratio is bigger? Which means there is a greater number of potassium channels relative to the sodium channels. Of course, it is the cell which has a membrane, resting membrane potential, which is closer to the nearest potential of potassium. So if we summarize what we learn in cell four, is that a cell with a more negative value at its resting membrane potential, which is closer to the nearest potential of potassium, has a greater number of potassium channels potassium to sodium channel ratio. A cell 
with minus 60 millivolt membrane potential has a smaller potassium sodium channel ratio. A cell with minus 70 millivolt resting membrane potential has a bigger potassium sodium ratio.